Hi everyone, Mrs. Thompson here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw this Caribbean wave with a sunset in the background. So about the Caribbean Sea. The Caribbean Sea, which borders Central America and Mexico, is one of the largest seas that includes many islands, referred to as the Caribbean Islands. It is known for its clear, vivid blue water and beautiful sunsets. The Caribbean Sea is used for many different activities like surfing, scuba diving, snorkeling, fishing, and other things um, on the water since the water is so clear and it stays warm all year long. Take a deep breath and imagine yourself sitting on the coastline enjoying a colorful sunset while palm trees sway around you. So to start this project you're going to need a piece of paper turned to portrait just like mine here. Portrait mean it means it is tall from the top to the bottom not from side to side. Then you're also going to need something to draw with. You might be drawing with oil pastel or sharpie or pencil depending on what I have given you for this project. Alright, let's get started. I'm going to keep this one over here for you to see. And I'm going to do my drawing on the plain one. The first step of this artwork is to draw a bumpy cloud line on the middle right side of our paper. Now this is not actually a cloud, it's actually um, the, the end of the wave. So that first step is going to be drawing a bumpy cloud line. Now if you're drawing with pencil, make sure you're not drawing too small. That's a lot of things I see kids do when they draw with pencil is they draw it teeny tiny. Try to make sure you're drawing it big enough. You don't want it too big, but make sure it's not too small. So this is a bumpy cloud shape near the middle of the page on the right side, and this is the sea foam at the edge of the wave. Now that we have that sea foam cloud there, we're going to add a line that begins at the top of the cloud shape, and it curves up and around, ending on the right side of the paper. This is the barrel of the wave. So it's this part here, it starts here at the top, it's going to curve up and around and end on the right side of the paper. So I'm going to start a line on the top, up, around, and there we go. Now this one I made here might be too small and it's okay if yours looks different. I'm not going to have a ton of room to draw the background on mine and that's okay. It's allowed to be a little bit different and I might actually switch to maybe a pencil or a thinner sharpie just so I can show you guys how to do this. But you should be fine in pencil and if you can erase it, awesome. Um, I'm going to continue adding curved lines following the same curve as the first line. The final line can extend past the edge of the page just like this one here. It goes around, it hits the edge of the page and I actually then continue it down here. So I'm going to keep doing that at least two or three more times. Starting at the top of the wave, coming around, and ending back on the right side. Like I said, I'm going to do that a few more times. So that's three lines. I think I should do one more. It doesn't look complete just yet. Maybe I'll go a little bit taller with this one. Oh yeah, I'm going to hit the edge of the paper, I'm going to stop, and then I'm going to continue it down here. So now we're just using our imagination to fill in this spot. All right, after you have the wave done is when we can add the horizon line. Now, depending on how much room you have here, um, here, your horizon line might be different. So every time I've drawn this, it turns out a little bit differently. You'll see here, my horizon line jumps and bumps over my wave. But on this one, my horizon line is actually going under my wave, completely under it. I didn't have to jump and bump at all. So each time I do it, it turns out a little bit differently. So it's okay if yours looks different from mine. So I think in my case, because I don't have a lot of room, I want my horizon line to go under my wave, but you can choose, do you want it to go here or a little bit lower? So my horizon line does not need to go over here because my wave is here and this is the land that's behind the wave. Now I think I'm gonna switch to a different marker just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. The next step is going to be adding a few palm trees. These palm trees are going to start with a line that kind of looks like, well, I guess a tree trunk. It's wider at the top and it gets narrower, or it's wider at the bottom and gets narrower towards the top. 
You will eventually color it in, but for right now you can leave it white. I'm going to start adding the palm fronds. Four is a good number. You could do five, you could try three. I'm gonna start with four here. And then I can start adding some zigzag lines to make the palm fronds. Now, if you already know a different way to make palm trees, you are welcome to change it and do it a different way. You're also welcome to do a different type of tree. But since this is in the Caribbean, palm trees are going to be very common. Just like what we have palm trees here, um, the Caribbean is very close to us. So they also have palm trees. If you want, you can add a couple coconuts. I don't think coconuts are super common on these types of palm trees, but up to you. I'm gonna do a couple more trees. Maybe this one is a little bit taller. It could also have more palm fronds. And a zigzag line to make the palm fronds. We're basically just repeating the same steps. Now you can decide how many palm trees you need. I feel like I need at least one more to balance my artwork. So maybe there is another palm tree kind of behind this wave. I'm gonna imagine it coming out on this side. And a lot of times palm trees grow um, to the side. So this one is definitely hanging a little bit lower than the others, depending on maybe there were some heavy winds or a hurricane that pushed it over, or maybe it just grew that way. All right, I'm pretty happy with my palm trees. A couple other things I might wanna add are some bushes in the background. These bushes help protect the um, all the sand from blowing away. Because if the sand all blew off the beach, it would not be a beach anymore. And this is a Caribbean sunset, so I do wanna add a sun setting in the background. And again, I'm imagining what a circle would look like or a semicircle behind my tree. Because I don't see the whole sun. The sun is behind the trees. So really, I think that's all of the circle I can do. You can't even really see it. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. So all you can see of my circle is just a little bit. So that's my setting sun. And I think that's it. Here are a few of my other ones. Now the details come in this artwork really from coloring. Now you might be coloring with neon oil pastels or you might be coloring with regular oil pastels. One thing you might wanna do though is making sure you are adding some reflection from your sun into your water. And that's gonna happen by adding a lot of yellow and orange. And you basically you're following the same color as you did on top. So yellow's the sun, after yellow would be orange, after orange could be um, red or pink. You wanna do the opposite down here. So I'm gonna do yellow, orange, pink. That's just the way it's reflecting from the sun. You could also do a little bit of blues on the side. So the sunset is reflecting in the water. You don't have to do your sunset reflecting in the water, but you're welcome to. Anything else you wanna add, you could, a shark fin, some birds in the sky, that's up to you.